Melbourne, this is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's four bright. The aircraft has just passed over me at at least a thousand feet above. Is there any Air Force aircraft in the vicinity? No known aircraft in the vicinity. Seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me. It's not an aircraft, it's... Can you describe the, uh, the aircraft? I cannot identify it. It has such speed. It's just vanished. Is the aircraft still with you? Now approaching from the southwest. The, the engines are rough idling. The sea is coughing. That strange aircraft hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Road Less Travel Special Edition, even. How's everybody out there in Radio Land? This is Gary L., and Gigi's Boo is here. Hi, Gigi's Boo. Say you, everybody. How's everybody? So glad to be back with you all. Yeah, we're so excited to be here tonight. We got We have such a wonderfully special guest on man i am just so geeked i'm so geeked about this but first of all i want to say hello to everybody in the rlm chat room oh wow what a group oh where to where to begin Gigi's boo what do you think oh just so good to see everybody honestly yeah no. so good to see everybody okay okay yeah you should be able to get the video kate uh it's actually on the rlt page the Ustream segment on the RL, RLT page. Uh, look for that. If you can't find it, we'll, we'll drop a link for it. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Cowboy Tech. nice to see you. I want to say hello to everyone out there. Man, can you tell them? Can you tell them excited? What's up? <laughs> okay, we got we got Bethy, Cowboy Tech. That's Beth A, as you know, as they say in Canada. And Grim Near, of course. Now, Grim Near is the chief cook and bottle washer of this of this website. If it weren't for him, none of this would be happening. So we have to give Grim Near the kudos. Moose Girl, I don't think she's here. Haven't noticed any. Haven't seen any indication of it. Kate's here. She asked a question earlier. Uh, trust no one. Haven't seen a peep. Atomic Punk, Beetle, Chalcedony, Chalcedony. I never did get. I never did get that right. Chloe, Free and Slave, I Be Don C, two times, Java Doctor, Paul Bunyan, Rob Work, Sock Puppet, Vinny, Brew Behind the Woodshed, Hal Anthony's here, he just had a show from 3 to 5, and if you haven't heard that show, you've, you're just you're just out to lunch, I mean, you're just lost, we're, we're all lost anyway, and I'm lost even after having known Al, Hal for how many years, Brenda, how long? Oh my gosh, oh dear, seven Eight now? Seven, eight years. And I'm still lost. Yeah. I was, he still leaves me in the dust. I mean, we, I mean, we, blows my mind. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll catch up with him. It's his show, the Behind the Woodshed from 3 to 5, every Sunday. And Clank, don't know Clank, like to meet him. Cl- Colfax, etc. Frumpy, Gigi's Boo, of course. Hello. And Grindel. Oh, we have, we have one of those uh, monsters here. Jehovah. Hoorah. 
uh, Wanataco Kozu, which looks like an amateur radio call sign, but it probably isn't. MM Bot, Pawn Sauce, Raging Suspect Sky. Who is that guy? Tip Bob, but let's find why we're, we got a guy here by the name of Suspect Sky, Boo Boo Bear. And it's Adrian, the documentarian, aka Suspect Sky, is on the line with us. Hi, Adrian. Hey, Gary. It's it's a pleasure to be here. I, I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. We're we're the ones that were like, wow, we're we're so happy to have you here. I've been a I've been a follower of your of your work for some time, and I think you have like forty plus docu- documentary pieces up on your YouTube page, which we'll put the link out to as we go along here. But wow, it's so neat to have you here in that Gigi's booth. Sure is, just astounding. We're so glad to meet you and have you with us and. Uh, we enjoy the subjects that you enjoy, and of course, Gary and I have always been on the road less traveled, <laughs> and uh, we kind of take the approach, that approach, most everywhere we go. Well, yeah, and and you know, and we and we encourage people to do so. Of course, people do what they do, and that's okay. And we'll, we're we we like you regardless. But we do encourage you to, to use a great deal of discernment, gather as much data as you can, use, be objectively skeptical, and come to your own conclusions. And, exactly right. And I think that's what Adrian Suspect Sky does so well in his presentations. He gives you the information, and you, then you make up your mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's really great. Well, tell, tell us, Adrian, how, how did you get started in this line of work? A uh, uh, sure thing. Um, I don't know how I got started uh, in in this line of work, um, but I do know that today uh, I try to pull together um, the most compelling evidence that I can and present it kind of like primary source material. Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of. Uh, I, I see a lot of like news commentary channels out there. Uh, Secure team, for example. Uh, y- y- you know, I see a lot of just kind of this is my take on footage that I found, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that's not that's not what I do. You know, I, I want to pull the primary source of information and provide that to the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, And that's good, and that's that's what needs to be done. That's actually what kind of the, the approach that we've taken in our various shows. One thing I've noticed come up in the chat room: maybe some people are, are confused, thinking that this is a video presentation right now. It is sure. not. It is not. It is an audio presentation, and I don't know if you're not hearing if you're not hearing the show. I don't know how you'll hear this. However, <laughs> if you are hearing the show and you don't know where to go. Uh, over on the right-hand side of the show page at reallibertymedia.com, you'll see a little icon that says RLM Radio. And just below that, there's a little start button, and all you have to do is hit that start button, and you'll be right with us. I uh, Notice the now plane is, has not been updated. <laughs> so uh, I, I forgot how to do that. In fact, I didn't do it to begin with. But, oh, oh pe- people think it's a chat room. <laughs> Oh, maybe I'm not sure what's going on. Anyhow, we're 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 there, and uh, I don't know how to correct it other than other than that. I mean, if they're not if you're not hearing it and you're not in the chat, then you're not going to get the information. That's nah, that, 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 no no worries. <laughs> well, anyway, that's why we put that stuff out far far in advance. But anyway, uh, and so so you so you oh, somebody click somebody clicked in. She says I'm breaking up a tad once in a while. Is anyone uh, anyone getting a breakup over there at Real Liberty Media? Is, that, is the audio okay, or is it just a Skype a Skype thing? It must, it's probably a Skype thing. I'll almost bet you. We had trouble the other night with this thing. Don't you remember? Oh. I, I hate Skype. Yeah, I, I have so much trouble with it, like all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan either, but it's what we're yeah. <laughs> kind of hung with, unless we go to a lot of SIP phones and all that good stuff. And I'm not set up for that. And a lot of people, a lot of people aren't set up for that. G- Gary, does everybody know how much help you have been <laughs> with with my latest video? I, I just 
want to ask that. <laughs> well, I haven't said anything about it. No. Oh, okay, no, Gary, you Gary has been a huge help. Uh, Gary has been a research consultant uh, on the vanishing. Um, I actually started a new job, uh, w- w- which has been quite frankly terrible. And uh, Gary really stepped up and has really been a huge help in bringing uh, the vanishing. Uh, which, which is my newest video, uh, and hopefully um, helping to bring many, 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 many you know new videos uh, in the future. That would be great, and I look forward to helping you out. It's uh, sorry I had to do some some things in the background, but yeah, I look no, for, I look thing. I look forward to help helping you out as, as best I can, and. Uh, and thank you for those kind words. It's just it's a topic. The subject matter maybe maybe we want to uh, segue a little bit into the general subject matter of the documentary. I think sure it, it, I think it's very compelling, and uh, it's something that I've had an interest in, and personally I've had experiences that are, and Brenna has too, and her family, and uh, we've all had experiences that are unusual to, to say the least and I, I think a lot of people have sure and and a lot of people don't talk about it and that's why that's one of the reasons i like to see um, as much participation in chat as as we can get because you get these conversations going on and all it takes is for like someone to step up step up and say uh, okay, Chloe, this this is uh, Suspect Sky, otherwise known as Adrian, who's the documentarian of the of the of the documentary that we're that we're talking about. Okay, and I lost my track. Oh yeah, someone. All it takes is one person to step up and say, you know, I had an experience one time, and that may open up the door for someone else who's been afraid to do so to 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 speak up, and that's very important because. In many cases, and I can speak from experience, in many cases, a trauma, a, a trauma has occurred, Psycholo- mm-hmm. psychologically or otherwise, has occurred. Exactly. And so, if you keep it bottled up inside of you, it has all kinds of negative effects. So it's good to get stuff out if, you, if, if, it, if it's there. If it's not there, then I'm happy for you. <laughs> but how does that sound about right adrian no th- th- that does sound about right um y- you know i i, I think a uh, a good comment to make right now is whitley striber's uh the communion mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a novel that you can pick up uh pretty much anywhere it was a new york times bestseller mm-hmm. uh, i've read it back yeah, it, it, it's a great book, um, and it pretty much describes at least my experience uh, with with the, the visitor phenomenon uh, in quotation marks. Um, I, I've experienced and seen things mm-hmm. uh, that have motivated me to create a YouTube channel. Uh, to dedicate a large portion of my life uh, to the exploration of this phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people don't really understand that. You know what I mean? But a lot of people do at the same time. Right. Uh, and, and I think it's important for people that do experience the visitor phenomenon uh, to get out there to make videos, uh go on to radio casts um, just to make their voice heard because it's a real phenomenon. Absolutely. And, and you, you, you know, a, a lot of people will kind of hide that information inside of themselves sure. whenever it's most beneficial to bring it out Absolutely. And, and to yeah. bring it into the public knowledge. Absolutely. And, and a lot of people are afraid of, of being ostracized or criticized, looked down upon. They're afraid their employers are going to look askance at them. And uh, there are all kinds of pressures on folks. And so it's understandable why why someone would be hesitant to just come, come right out and talk about 
about that. And, and Gary, you know I hate my job, so I don't care if my employer <laughs> well, okay. uh, you know, thinks negatively about it. And I, th- <laughs> and I, and I think you I think you do put up with a whole lot. So yeah. That's right. And I just I just received a side note that our dog, <laughs> our carker spaniel Atticus, has a rat cornered. <laughs> 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 he, he, he's a nutball I don't know yeah and Grimner points out in the chat room The Communion was a good movie too with Christopher Walken yeah I I honestly feel like the movie didn't capture the the scariness of the book oh no, no. Uh, he, he, yeah I, I've given the book to a number of people um, and, and they all like can't finish it mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, the movie to me was a little bit Hollywood kind of style done. Right. Uh, but but I think that the, the point that the book and that Whitley Schreiber, the author, makes um, is very important. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's kind of been the, the premise of kind of my work, mm-hmm. to be honest. Right, and and then in my day, if I may say that, you had people like John Mack, and you had um, you had the the, ori- the, the original ni- kneecap folks, and there, there were and that was way before any, anyone ever considered the internet, and everything was 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 uh, printed material, magazines and newsletters and these sorts of things, and, and it was a very limited um, exposure to the topic but then along came along came the internet and guess what we have our fingers on the pulse of much of the world history and certainly uh, time sensitive of a time anything time sensitive will, will travel immediately across the web so we so we're getting a whole lot more information the technology the, the ability of people to take pictures and videos is much better on the downside, the technology for faking digital video is also much better. But you know, it, you take things, you, t- you take a, the the whole uh, totality of evidence. Uh, if you have, for example, a, a video shot for, by different people, unrelated people from different perspectives at the very same time. That gives it a great deal of credibility, and I think, and I noticed in the in the uh, in one of the comments on the on the early release video is that someone actually has a separate viewing of one of the pieces that were that was shown in the video. What is that? Is that right? Oh yeah, a- a- absolutely. Uh, the best sightings, in my opinion, uh, are the ones that you have a multiple. Uh, sighting experience so you have multiple angles multiple cameras capturing this kind of phenomenon uh it, it it helps to uh alleviate some of the concerns with was it was this faked right um and can i say something right there oh absolutely fire away boo-boo. Um, I've, I've known some people who actually had the encounter like you say it you know what, what we're talking about it's not the people who have true encounters. There is, when you interview them or they talk about it, you automatically know that they are not faking. You can usually pick out the fakes real quick, but people that are really, really have had an encounter, they are reluctant to talk about it, and you can actually see fear. Mm hmm. And Brenda, they they want to talk about it, but they just can't. And Brenda would know. And why don't you tell? Why not you tell Adrian about a little bit of your background? So, why why I said that? Well, my background. I've had some very traumatic things to happen to me, and and at the time I couldn't remember what happened. Gary picked up on it very quick, um, probably faster than my family did, and. Uh, I knew great fear, and I would absolutely, completely lose my memory for a little while mm-hmm. because of the the atrocious things that were done to me. Now, this was not an alien abduction, but it could fall in the in a in a class of an abduction. Uh, but it was 
another form, let's put it that way. It probably could fall into a, a visitor experience. <laughs> Very much. You could you yeah. could say that these are visitors. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I, oh my God, it was awful. I, Gary, Gary, and my family really stuck with me. I mean, it was to the point I didn't even recognize my husband. He looked familiar to me, but I didn't know him. I just knew he was familiar. And, uh, boy, I've really went down the road less traveled in the last three or four years. Yes, I've completely gotten almost over it. I still have days. But uh, well, I've you're, really you're, gotten over it. And I've tried to help reach out and help other people. Yeah. Right. And you also have some, some uh, formal training in that regard, right? Yes. I, was, uh, I am a, a psychiatric nurse, have my BS degree. And uh, saw a lot of it and uh, worked with a nurse who told the story that absolutely made my hair stand on end. Uh, She was going home from um, work one night and she encountered a low flying object that was running parallel with her and followed her up what we call the river bridge here, up up uphill. Um, and uh, she came, went immediately and told her husband, she said, I know that that flying saucer or that UFO was following me. And he tried to calm her down. And so in about a week, she was outside a handout close on the line. And as she looked up, she saw a UFO come up behind her barn out of her pasture and she dropped everything and started screaming Mm -hmm. and went Mm -hmm. in the house Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and locked all the doors just like you like you see on the movies i mean you Mm -hmm. know everybody locks the doors that can't get to me Mm -hmm. and she had a complete nervous breakdown and she said the people from um the paranormal right um study in in durham paranormal yeah right uh, they came down and interviewed mm-hmm. her, and they said that she was not lying. Yeah, that's formerly uh, formerly the Ryan Institute. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean it's 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 here, and 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 my grandfather saw a UFO at the same place this woman did, mm-hmm. and uh, he was he he was just a an, an old country country guy Indian guy. And he didn't care. He said, "I said, weren't you scared?" He said, "Nah." And I hate to use the words he said. He said, hell no, Brennan. He <laughs> said, you know me? He said, it takes a whole lot to scare a damned old Indian. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, but he saw it. He saw it, too. Right. And um, he said it was very odd. It was very odd, too. So, yeah. you know. And, and that, that reminds me a lot of my own experiences. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm a 30-year-old, uh, you, you know, person. And... My first experience was driving with my grandmother uh, down, you know, our local road, and we saw a silver light uh, streaking across the sky that would have blips that would appear as it traveled across the sky, if that that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, My second encounter... Uh, was about a year later, you know, I'm still a young child at this point, uh, was we are driving to go visit some family in Ohio, and we see a series of red dancing lights uh, that would drop up and down um, into the forest uh, as we crossed, you know, the interstate. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely familiar with the phenomenon and it's different for every person. Uh, mm-hmm. it, they manifest mm-hmm. themselves mm-hmm. differently for mm-hmm. every different observer. Uh, and I, I think that's a key point, uh, that, that our audience needs to keep in mind whenever mm-hmm. hearing about these stories. Um, you know, you, you hear about, uh, oh, I saw a flying saucer, oh, you know, you, you shrug it off mm-hmm. as, you know, a flying saucer, but, but in actuality, uh, you've seen something peculiar and you can't really describe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and, and it, it just kind of like meshes into itself this whole visitor phenomenon uh, that a lot of people experience. Yes. Yeah. And as as we've been talking here, Hal from behind the woodshed put a link into the chat room and asking if we're familiar with the YouTube site Industrial Surrealism Videos. Oh, here. Let, let me see if I can click it. <laughs> Okay. Won't let me click, but I'm gonna copy and paste you, that. And out of that window, out of uh, out of KVIRC, you have to double click the link, and it will pop. Your... I, I, I like that Nikola Tesla is the profile picture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, we've all had some experiences. I can tell you. Um, I uh, I'll go ahead and share mine since we're so we're on that on that note. And before I do that, though, I want to uh, let ever, everyone know, at least those who have Skype capability, uh, you can call in if you want to. If you want to talk to Adrian, Gigi's boo, or for some reason you might want to talk to me. I'm not sure why, but uh, you can call in on. Get ready. Get ready to write this down. It's a long name. It, it's. Uh, Everybody's familiar with Flying Horse, so the first part of the name is Pegasus, P-E-G-A-S-U-S, -S, followed immediately by S-I-X in text, or, the, or 6 written out. So Pegasus 6, and then the numbers 870. So it's Pegasus 6870 is our Skype name, and I didn't spring for the Skype call-in number because I'm not sure that Skype is going to stay with us or maybe we'll do something different differently. Uh, so we're just kind of winging it with, with Skype tonight. So anyway, it's Pegasus 6870. If you want to call in, share, share a story or ask some questions or whatever. Okay, back in 1968, I know this was back when, man, we, we, we were... Uh, beating on stones with chisels, chisels and hammers and, and, all, and all that good stuff, um, my friend and I were going to a high school basketball game. Okay. Now, I remember it's 1968 very clearly. It was December, actually, of 1968, because it was cold, but there was no snow on the ground. So he was driving, and I didn't have a license, so... He was driving the car. Now, we're coming out of the country. Now, we were country, as they say, and um, in the mountains. So, over the over the rivers and through the dales and all that good stuff. So, we're driving along the highway. And as, you, as we start into this very gradual left-hand turn, I look up and over top of a stand of trees is this huge thing. Now, this was like 6.30 in the evening. It wasn't totally dark, and the, the skies were clouded, so it, I had the sense of the shape of a, of a large object over this tree line. Not very high at all. I'm talking like maybe 200, 100, 200 feet above, you know, above the ground. And on each of the outer sides was a very bright white light. But the thing that was really the kicker was the, the light that appeared to be underneath it. It was, um, it was a beam of sorts. I don't know how else to describe it. It, was, it, was, it had the quality of a white light quality of a very high intensity LED that we know now. Uh -huh. That we didn't know then. But it was a very tight white beam that was focused onto the trees and like it's looking down through the, in, through the trees to the ground. And what the, the, the most bizarre, excuse me for hitting the table, the most bizarre thing was that the, the beam was moving. But it wasn't moving in a way that you could see it. You could not see the sweep of it move. It would just be jittery. It would be here, there, and everywhere. And, but you wouldn't see it move. You just, it was erratic. It, but you didn't see the sweep is what I'm getting uh -huh. at. It, it was just like click, click, click. It was different places. It didn't go out. It just moved, and you didn't perceive it. It was almost as if it was moving faster than your eye is capable of processing image and your brain. So, anyway, 
So the road curves around, goes by that stand of woods, which as you're trying to look up, you know, and to your left and to see it, and you can't see it because it's too close to the ground. And we go by. Okay, it didn't seem like a big deal. Till, till I got to the basketball game. And I don't know, I don't know what was going on. All I know is, as I remember, we were, we, I arrived. I don't, I don't know what happened to my buddy. I don't, I don't even have a recollection of him at that point. But I was there. The game was underway. It had been underway. Now bear in mind, the game starts at seven. It was about six thirty when we left. We lived nine miles away from the school, so you do the math. The game was underway. I had no interest in the game. I felt. Uh, I don't know what the right word is. Um, very, I don't want to say upset, that's not right, agitated. Maybe that's the right word. I felt very agitated. And all I was doing was walking the hall. You know, if, if you remember high school where they had the big gates that they blocked off most uh-huh. of the school. So I would just walk the hall back and forth. I don't, I have, that's all I have, the only recollection I have. And I, had no, I have no recollection of going home after that. But it was just one of those things that never talked about. It just was never spoken of again. And then years later, this was what really tripped me off, that something something happened. Years later, uh, if you remember when Close Encounters of the First Kind, or no, whatever, Third. Third Kind, thank you, Close Encounters of the Third Time was released to theater, I went to see that. Now, I'm not a, a scarified person. I think Brennan can tell you that. There aren't a whole lot of things that freak me out. But, during the movie, everything's fine. And if you remember that one scene where the, uh, the large UFO rises, uh-huh. rises up, you know, for, uh-huh. for the effort. When that happened in the movie, I lost my mind. Uh-huh. I slid out of the seat, into the floor, covering my face, quivering. The people I was with, people I was with, they were down there trying to console me and finally get me up out of the floor. I was at that point. I knew something happened. Yeah. Anyway. And, and, and Gary, I, I definitely think that you will experience, that a lot of people will experience um, those kind of uh, triggers right. uh, that, that just kind of send them into a memory recollection uh that they didn't even expect to happen. Mm -hmm. It it, it reminds me a lot of my own personal experience. And I don't share this a lot, uh, but I will with you because uh, you're a trusted friend. You've really helped me out with, with, with our uh, agenda and our program here. Um, But when I was about six or seven years old, um, I used to wake up uh, and go downstairs to watch morning cartoons. And one uh, morning when I, you know, went downstairs to watch uh, cartoons, uh, there was a voice that I heard and it was kept repeating itself. um, And it kept saying lonely little boy over and over and over again. Oh, my God. And, and then the that. voice was coming from my father's study. And I walked into my father's study and there was red laser like lights zipping around uh, the ceiling of my father's study. And the voice kept saying lonely little boy over and over and over again. Uh, I'm in my mid 30s. And that experience from when I was six years old uh, still sticks with me uh, and still makes me pretty sure (laughs) that the visitor phenomenon uh, is occurring. Um, You know, I'm I'm, I'm a successful business person. You know, I work a job every day or whatever. But, you know, whenever I think back to that, uh, it, it definitely reminds me that there is more uh, to the experience. Um, I don't know. You know, there, there's just more. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. There, there's clearly, I'm, I mean, the history is there. I mean, the, the ancient history is there if, if one bothers to do the research. 
is and, and you made a very interesting point i think a very salient point earlier when you're talking about the interpretations that different cultures will put on these on these events and, yep. and and Carl Jung, the psych, the famous psychiatrist, kind of spoke to that when he was talking talking about uh, uh, collective consciousness and or racial consciousness, sorry, and archetypes, cult, uh, social and cultural archetypes, and and yeah, and it's weird. And there was a book that came out years ago called uh, Angels and Demons, I think. Was that's the, it. Was the name of it? And yeah, that, that's it. And that writer spoke a little bit to that about how uh, there's a there's a cognitive process and interpretation that we put on these events, and then it, then that begs the question of, of how much. You know, obviously, there's an external an external stimulus. I mean, that's clear. That has to be the case. But there's some that in some manner or the other we interpret that those events differently and, and so it's that's that's an area of study that's pretty fascinating to me too so it, well let, let me speak here just a minute you know he he said he heard the lonely little boy and it unnerved him and you became unnerved other people become unnerved it's not so much as being unnerved and being scared is it that you know something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You've already been there, and mm -hmm. the subconscious mm -hmm. lets you know that, just like in communion, uh, and it, the book, he had all kind of experiments done on him, and it was painful. Mm -hmm. But yet he, in the end, felt an affinity right. with the people. Right. So I think the part of us covering our Heads and and being frightened comes from the old thing, uh, the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. What was the boogeyman? Mm -hmm. um, you remember when Novalee uh, was was talking about the boogeyman to us that time. My mm -hmm. niece, mm -hmm. uh, we fully believe that she saw something. Sure, um, the whole nine yards. I mean, there's so much that's. Um, it comes into play here you can't you just you can't lump it in just lump it together everybody's right. a little bit different in their experience but yet it all has a common thread mm -hmm. and, a, and a common core that holds us together right am i making sense yeah absolutely and one one other dine one other event that you kind of make me think of is the cultural interpretation of near-death experiences yeah that's it's kind of interesting that there it's, it's there there's something happening but it's being interpreted differently depending on your background what do you think about that adrian uh i i kind of want to go a little bit more into that story okay uh, that, that i just told okay go uh, ahead I didn't know if you did or not. That's why I went in. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this, I, I do suspect Sky uh, whenever I can. Uh, so I, I investigate, I find footage, uh, I edit things whenever I can. And there is no monetary value to me. I mean, this is something that I am just passionate about. Um, and that passion comes from probably this single uh well there have been more experiences but the this singular experience uh with the lonely little boy mm -hmm. um after uh the red laser like lights uh were zipping around the ceiling after the voice lonely little boy was heard um Granted, I'm six years old. Uh, my mother picked me up, brought me over to our uh, living room couch, and said, there's no such thing as ghosts. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying that over and over and over again. Uh, as she was saying that, every, electronic, every electrical appliance 
uh, in our house exploded. Wow. Mm -hmm. and wow, 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 wow. Yeah. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, uh, I've been very adept uh, and very interested in the UFO, the visitor, uh, and the paranormal mm -hmm. hypothesis. Right. And... In a weird way, you know, I've started a new job, as you know, Gary. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> it's been miserable, uh, but I'm still extremely dedicated to it. I want to bring uh, at least awareness to the idea that there is something beyond the everyday. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think, it's, yes. I think it's also important, as we were talking about earlier, to allow people some of the people or many of the people I have a feeling out there allow them to to feel like it's okay mm -hmm. that you're not by yourself mm -hmm. and even if even if you've had an experience that might be prosaically explained later it still has an effect on you and it still it still has that uh, traumatic impact that you don't need that in your life there's too, way too many things going on to ha to have to deal with that kind of burden, so yeah. So, if, like I say, I'm, I'm going to use that as a as a segue to to offering again. Uh, anyone wants to call in on the Skype, I mean, you don't you don't even have to give your name, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, and if I if I happen to figure out who it is, I won't say who you are. If that's what you if that's if that's how I, I want to bring something to him. This is just a tad off, but it still runs along what we're talking about. Right. I'm not. I don't know how he feels about um, paranormal, uh, not paranormal, parallel universes, mm -hmm. time travel, mm -hmm. all this. But I'm telling you, my sister came flying in one day here. And she was telling us that she has she was uptown, and she was sitting there, and all of a sudden she looked up, and Main Street did not look like Main Street now. And so my mother tried to talk to her and find out exactly what she saw. And she did see it, and she was just, very excited, not afraid, just absolutely ecstatic. And she, my mother got one of her old annuals out, and you know how they do how they did in the sixties in high school annuals. You took out uh, advertisements and things, and there was a picture of our main street mm -hmm. with all several shops that had bought ads in the in the, the in her annual. And my sister said, "Right there it is. That's what I saw." Mm -hmm. And she, she told them how the people were dressed. Um, people were, it, it, downtown was very busy, and downtown now is a ghost town. There's there's nothing there now. Just right. maybe a few antique shops and some loan companies, just about like Main Street America everywhere. But anyway, um, so guess what we did? I told Gary, I said, I'm going down with her. Well, here we all were out where she was stopped. And we were in the middle of Main Street, and we were moving the width of a credit card. We would even put a credit card down and move move it as we moved, as we moved on and on and on. We even had the police come by and ask us <laughs> what was wrong. <laughs> and I called Gary. Gary said, tell me drop something. This is paranormal, so, paranormal field work, you see. <laughs> so we did, and we have been up there so many times. It's unreal yeah, that I, it happened to her. Sure. And I think that brings it, brings up another topic that I think Adrian showed some interest in, is this, uh, this idea of... Um, what's, what's the right word, Jesus Boo? Uh, portals? Portals. Oh is yeah, it, is that, is that, mm -hmm. right? is that it sounded a lot to me, kind of like the uh, the Berenstain Bears. Yeah, you know? there we go. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> That's a whole thing, Gary and I have talked great deal about. We even had some arguments. 
Sure. And I said, no, no, it's spelled this way, right. Gary. And Gary would say, no, uh, you be, no, baby, no, baby, listen. here." how it's spelled. Yeah, I mean, it's just things change. I mean, <laughs> Right, and yeah, and Adrian's actually done a, a documentary on that for you guys. Really? Yeah, it's really? called The Mandela Effect, and he's done a documentary. I have got to watch that. See, see, oh, I told yeah, you. Yeah, you, yeah you'd, li- you'd like it. Uh, th- there's a whole bunch of weird things. Um, uh, I mentioned in my in my video uh, the the concept of mass misidentified uh, misrememberings, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and the idea is that people collectively, mm-hmm. uh, as a group, misremember uh, the dates or topics. Um, or names, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, but that, but that it's a strange phenomenon that like some people do remember it a different way, right? Um, and it, it goes as far as uh, like movie titles, mm-hmm. TV show titles. I mean, all, all kinds of like really interesting things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the Berenstain Bears just happens to be the most like kind of upfront. Yeah. in your face kind of uh, example of them right yeah it's it's, yeah. A, it's a fascinating topic and uh, <laughs> and it, it it's a great uh, uh conversation conversation piece for a crowd because you can get a very animated conversation going with that but anyway the the documentary that we should be talking about the, the vanishing uh, adrian i mean it, sure. it, it basically kind of starts out I think with reference to missing people. Is, is, yeah, yeah, we got completely off that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, and, and I don't. I honestly don't care. I I don't do anything for views or hits or anything. I mean, I I just like talking to like minded people like yourselves. Uh, so we we can talk about whatever you want. To be honest. <laughs> okay. Well, good. But yeah, but yeah, it 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 talks about people missing missing people, and that's a, that by itself is a is a pretty spooky topic because absolutely yeah because you have so many people go missing now most of which there's some rational explanation for but then you have those who just flat out disappear without a trace and they're not always grown-ups we're talking about little kids that can just or or they have their clothes folded where right. they disappear. Right. I mean, it's it's really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's almost like time travel. There. Mm-hmm. I, now I don't know why, but that just stuck in my mind. Now it could be uh, abductions, but usually, if clothes are folded or left, that's evidence of time travel because they say that when you time travel. I'm not talking about going through a portal. I'm talking about just time travel, that you end up be, being naked when you do it. Do you have a theory on that, Adrian? Uh, my opinion on uh, those kind of abductions, uh, particularly when things are like remaining, uh, r- remaining in the space that the people are abducted, um, is... A little bit darker, I suppose. Okay. Uh, I find that there is a lot of evidence that people are experiencing the visitor phenomenon. Yes. Uh, And I find that the clandestine nature Mm -hmm. of the visitor phenomenon uh, is a little bit shady, you know, for lack of a better, better word, right. uh, it, it's a little bit. Uh, anything that that is clandestine to me mm-hmm. uh, is worthy of suspicion. Sure. And I find that the visitor hypothesis uh, pops its head up in a number of ways, whether it's vanishings whether it's uh, ghost stories, whether it's um, abduction uh, recollections. I think that the visitor hypothesis pops its head up uh, in a number of modern ways. And to tie it all together is this kind of clandestine, uh, whatever agenda it is. Right. Uh, Yeah, you you know what I'm trying to say. I know exactly what you're saying. And and I think... 
what you're getting at probably took a major leap forward during the Roswell or right after the Roswell event. Would you would you say that's that's true? Uh, can can you repeat that? Uh, this whole, as you point out, agenda took a major leap forward after the event at Roswell. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I mean that that was the number one. Um, most media attention uh, event, but it's it's been around for ages and it continues today. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and I think we have my personal opinion, for what it's worth, is I think I think we have governmental involvement at the very highest level. Be, uh, that's beyond uh, any co- any type of oversight, and certainly any kind of discovery. So, this for for what it's worth, I think that that was uh, that came that became as a result of what happened in Roswell. I know a lot of people think I sound crazy. And this is not a George Norrie show. <laughs> 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 We're not on coast to coast, to be, <laughs> but we sound like it. But anyway, that's much my personal view that there was. I mean, there's always been. A, I think there's always been a knowledge of a different. An alternative history, let's put it that way. There's always been that knowledge, and it's always been kind of a hush, hush, keep it quiet for a lot of reasons. Oh, and, and and totally agree. I mean, we look at our candidates today, mm. Hillary Clinton and Donald <laughs> Trump. I, I mean, really, these are our candidates. Right. Like, and there is a secret history absolutely uh, behind our political elite. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think to dismiss uh, the recent history of abduction phenomenon of Roswell, Mm -hmm. I mean, these are real historical events that occurred. And and to think that people in power uh, don't know about it um, (laughs) would be a little bit naive. Yeah, it would. (laughs) And, And whether we like them or not, these these guys at the at the very tip top are extremely smart. They're very intelligent, and as Hal likes to say, they know us better than we know ourselves. So don't for a minute think that what you're seeing is some Keystone Cop rendition of like this this whole election thing. As you brought up, I laugh because for a couple oh, of it's a disaster it is? It, it, it's it's my rise of a, of a new world order series right it's, coming to, to fruition right. i mean it's yeah. it, it's just corporate uh candidates right that that control you know they they work with banks and whatnot i, I mean it's it's a disaster for our concept of modern democracy right and, it, and to me it's, it, all you can do is laugh you really, I mean, that's it. Yeah, what, there's what? nothing else you can do except maybe pick up a gun. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but, right. I, no, I, I know, but it, it's it's a mess. It I a mean, mess. Uh, American democracy has been a joke uh, for quite some time. Yeah, yeah, that's another story in itself, too. But uh, Absolutely, yeah, yes. It's just... Uh, Crazy stuff, and you know, I I swore I wasn't going to do it. But I tell you what, I got to talk about Bill Clinton now. You know, you know, Bill and Hillary, they've been around for a while, and uh, Hillary, she's just a mess. I don't know what we could do with her. Monica tried to straighten her out, but she couldn't. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that's my that's my political comment. Okay, we're we're fifty three minutes in. We got six minutes and ten seconds left to roll. Um, Again, uh, that appeal out there, if anyone wants to call in on Skype, Pegasus 6 and the number is 870. All, all crunch. Oh, oh Gary, no. it, it might be worth mentioning go ahead. Uh, this this article that I sent you the other day. Yeah, go ahead and t- talk about that for the next five, yeah, five th- minutes. Th- this is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so Ben and I over, over at Suspicious Observers, uh, we picked up uh, an article done uh, by a bunch of Canadian uh, physicists uh, that discussed uh, how they're receiving a number of really unusual light signals um, from a number of solar systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me let me see here. Okay, there there are two hundred and thirty four stars. 
Mm -hmm. uh, between the F2 and K1 spectral range, which basically means it's around the G-type star, like right. our own sun. Right, right. Um, so there are 234 solar systems that are similar to our uh, solar system that we are picking up laser signals. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, ben and I both agree that this is the best evidence of extraterrestrial life ever picked up. Uh, and we're actually going to be featuring it uh, at the April Observing the Frontier Conference. Yeah, if you want to give Ben a plug on that, please feel free to do so. Yeah, I, I, I try texting him. He, he's got two kids, I guess, on the way. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of a little bit difficult here. But I, I'm, I'm looking through the article, uh, and it's just fascinating that, if you can imagine, it would be as if the Earth uh, sent a laser signal to the moon, mm -hmm. and then an outside solar system saw that. Right. So, so that's what the data kind of looks like right now. Um, ben and I are super excited about it. Well, here's uh, here's what it implied to me, or what I what I inferred from it. We're looking at what appears to be a common technology, right? Great point. Yeah, great point. And so that if that's the case, Occam's razor would would drive me to say that it is evidence of a colonial presence. It, it, it's funny you say Occam's razor because my email is Occam's taser. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I totally agree with you that sometimes that principle is applied uh, in a way that it shouldn't be. No, you know I'm what sure. I mean? Like, uh, the, the 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 simplest answer is true, sure, but like you said, maybe there are other civilizations, and maybe the simplest answer uh, for this bizarre laser phenomenon that we're experiencing might be a little bit beyond what um, those in the mainstream are using Occam's yeah. razor. Sure, <laughs> you you sure. know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, what what would make more sense if you had a colonial presence in a over a large area of of a galaxy? What would what would make more sense than having a a, co a common infrastructure for communications? I mean, I know I'm anthropomorph anthropomorphizing that a bit, but nonetheless, it's logical. I mean, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have all these separate instances just coinc coincidentally uh, create the very same technology. That that doesn't make any sense to me. So it makes makes me think that these are these are all the same people talking to one another. No, yeah, that, that, that's a great point. And I, I have to just bring up too before before you have to go offline is um the the fast radio bursts. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, I mean we're we're living in a time where there's fast radio burst phenomenon going on, and now we have uh, this this kind of laser uh, light, you know, kind of spectrum communication going on. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it is. It, it's it, it's an interesting time to be to be following this topic. Sure is. And how how about you, Juju Boo? I hear you yawning. What are you doing? What going to say? I, did, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Atticus, Atticus killed a rat. Got a minute. He left. had one hemmed up, and Melly killed it. Oh, you know he ain't gonna kill. He's scared of rats. <laughs> oh, he's strutting like Bob Seeker. Yeah, right. He let Melly kill it, then he takes the credit. Yeah. What do you know about that? Well, you know, it, yeah, wow, we got about 50 seconds left, 45 actually. Anyway, thanks, Adrian. Dang. Thank you so much. I so enjoyed this. This is. We want to have you back on again. Absolutely. Uh, I'd love to be here. Uh, uh, Gary, uh, thank you so much. Brenna, you've been a pleasure. Um, Gary's been a huge help to our project, uh, and, and it's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and it's been great having you, man. This, I, and don't forget, folks, we're going we're to run the documentary right afterwards. It's on our Ustream 
account that's right on the Road Less Travel show page at reallibertymedia.com. So if you want to watch the vid, uh, the documentary, you can do it right here. So anyway, thanks so much, and thanks to Adrian, and thanks to Brenna, thanks to all the chatters out there. We hope to be back, and we look forward to seeing you again on the Road Less Travel. Bye-bye.